everybody, it's Robbie here. And I'm coming to you today with another Evan Moore product. This is the Daily Science for Grade 4 from Evan Moore. And I wanted to check this out because I have a science loving child. And hi, cat. And the topics in here seemed really interesting. So I'm going to do a little bit of an overview and then a walkthrough. And this product was sent to me um, from Evan Moore in order to, um, well, in exchange for my honest review. So let's kind of go through this and take a look at what it is and how it's organized. So this um, curriculum is not meant to be a supplemental. Um, a lot of classroom um, teachers use this as a supplemental, but you can use this as a full curriculum if you want to. So we won't be using it that way, but um, truly, if you need a curriculum on a budget, this is for sure the way to go. It is very well laid out. It is organized and lesson planned for you, so you know exactly what you're supposed to do every day. Um, every unit is um, concluded with a hands-on activity. So if you're wanting maybe, you know, a few activities here and there, but don't want a curriculum that is driven by experiments, um, a lot of families just don't find they have the time or the energy to do that, then this would be a good option for you. Because obviously if you don't even want to do any of them, you can skip them if you want to. And it does cover um, some things that are considered standards. So if that is something that, you know, um, when I say standards, I mean, you know, the um, government standards. So there are four standards-based weekly lessons. There are 24 activity pages. There are lesson plans. Um, it gives you vocabulary lists. And it gives comprehension and visual literacy practice. And there are six hands-on activities. So if you were to use this for a whole school year, you'd only have six experiments to do um, or hands-on activities to do. So if you want more than that, you would have to, if you're using this on its own, you would have to do a little bit of research and supplement. But it would be pretty easy to supplement with activities if you need to. So this is broken down into units, although they don't really call them units. They call them big ideas. So each big idea has five weeks worth of content in it. So this would then cover 30 weeks worth of material if you were to use it on a daily basis. Um, so for instance, big idea one, plants and animals depend on each other and on their environment for survival. It gives you the vocabulary list that's gonna be covered during the course of the five weeks. And then it breaks everything down by week. And then as we get into it, You'll see it's broken down by day as well. Um, at the end of the unit or the big idea, um, you'll have a hands-on activity where in this case it'll be a seed catalog. And as you can see, every unit or big idea is broken down the same exact way, five weeks with a hands-on activity at the end. You, and, um, you can use this as a reproducible so the license does allow you to do that if you have multiple students you can reproduce these pages and in that case honestly you might even consider the pdf download um, most people when they want to purchase the evan moore products they either go to rainbow resource or go to amazon but one thing that i think a lot of people don't realize is that if you purchase directly from evan moore not only do they often offer a lot of free shipping options but they will heavily discount these books on a regular basis. So don't, don't discount purchasing directly from Evan Moore. They also have PDF versions of a lot of these. So for instance, let's kind of just go through, I'm gonna start over, and but I just wanna show you something real quick. I say start over, I'm gonna start at the beginning and kind of walk through, but I wanted to show you something. Okay, so this is these are teacher notes. This is a student activity sheet, activity sheet. So if you were to get the PDF version, you wouldn't need to print every single page out of this book. You could use the PDF for the teacher notes 
and then and also the lesson I'm sorry the answer keys and then just print out the pages that you need these are perforated so if you prefer the book and you only have maybe one student or you have a way to scan and you don't mind doing that scan and print these it's all in black and white so you're not going to be missing out by um, printing these out in black and white um, yeah I don't know some people might see that as a drawback because you know color can be more engaging for some students and it, and it can also be a distraction for others but it is beautifully laid out um, lots of graphics small chunks of information larger font sizes so it's not like an overwhelming amount of just black and white text it is um, got a lot of really good illustrations to go with it it's just not in color so um, the Skill Sharpener series are done in color, but they're also meant to be a supplement and they're not going to include 30 weeks worth of material in each of those. So anyway, I just thought I'd point that out. All right. So in the book, um, at the beginning, after the contents, you will see the um, basic outline of how the book is organized. And so it will give you, um, you know, point out, you know, the big ideas and where the vocab is and how the weekly lessons are laid out and that sort of thing. Then you get um, into the first unit, which is big idea number one. Plants and animals depend on each other and on their environment for survival. It gives you the key concept, the standard, the national standard that it's covering. And then um, it gives a teacher background, a unit overview, and it, this is broken down by week. And then you get into the first lesson. Um, this is the actual plan, the teacher's guide um, and the curriculum plan for this particular week. So it literally tells you on this one page what's gonna be covered on day one, day two, day three, day four, day five for the whole week. So again, this is a teacher resource. It may have content in here that you want to, you know, talk about with your student, but it is meant for the teacher's um, viewing. And then we have the worksheet pages. So day one, day two, day three, day four, day five. So, and each one of these has the text from which the questions are going to draw answers from. So I don't feel like you really need any of the information here in order for the student to be able to answer this. So it could be very independent on the part of the student if you want it to be um, or you can you know make it an interactive lesson however you want to do it but I like that it just gives you these kind of flex this kind of flexibility so it also doesn't go all that deep if you want something that goes really deep but if you I love Evan more for when I have a subject that I really want to cover but I don't want a full-fledged curriculum for it um, you know, something that's going to have multiple books or, you know, possibly literature to go with it or, a, you know, a ton of extra activities that you have to do. If I want it simple, this is, this is what I go to. And I've done it for other subjects as well. Geography is one that comes to mind, you know, if I don't want a full-fledged geography curriculum, you know, I pull from an Evan Moore resource. Or let's say um, I'm just doing unit studies based on a student interest, you know, my student's interest, and I just need some resources to pull from. These are fantastic because literally these big ideas are broken down by topic. So you could just tear all these pages out, sort them by topic, and then when you need a resource, you could just go pull from it. So that's another way you can use these. Okay. So anyway, um, we talk about the, the plants, you know, the fruit, why they have fruit, why some, um, what the fruit is for, and it looks like this first week is covering all about that. The next week is covering about honey and, and bees and why they do or don't make honey. And it goes through that. Then we go into week four. We're talking about food in the winter. So, I mean, if you're going, if you're doing a whole week's worth of material based on one subtopic within the unit, um, you know, that's actually, that's actually pretty good coverage. So I said it doesn't go very deep, but you know, that's actually quite a bit of material per subtopic. So anyway, um, week five. Okay, so now we're getting into the end. We've got a unit review here at the end. So we have one, two, three, four,
pages of unit review, but the last one is a hands-on activity. So it, that's basically how all of these units are going to be covered. Again, you've got the teacher overview. We've got a new unit here. Um, it's going into the overview for each week. Then you have week one. You've got the lesson plan here for the teacher. And then you've got the student worksheets. And of course, now we're talking about um, why garbage smells, but microorganisms is the unit topic. So we talk about microorganisms and how it breaks down, organic material, uh, good and bad germs, that sort of thing, molds and fungi, and then we've got a unit review. Two, three, four pages for unit review and a hands-on activity. So I like that there's only four pages in the unit review. If there's a five day week, you could take one day to do the activity the next day to do this and it breaks it down into um, a manageable time frame there. Unit three is, um, oh, is an uh, ecology unit. So how is the Grand Canyon formed? I said ecology, I didn't mean ecology. I meant geology, a geology unit. Vocab is not my strength, sorry. All right, so how is the Grand Canyon formed? Glaciers, volcanoes, earthquakes, then we got the unit review, and some of the reviews are done in a way that make it fun and not so, um, you know, boring. And then we have, again, a hands-on activity. And, you know, I've looked at uh, quite a few of these. This, these are not things that would be difficult to find either, which I appreciate. Um, when you get to the end of a unit, if you, or get to where you have to do a hands-on activity and half the stuff, or even if one key item is something that is difficult to find, it just kind of ruins the whole thing. Okay, so big idea for properties of rocks. The difference between rocks is and rocks is really rocks and minerals. Um, where do rocks come from? Uh, are some rocks valuable? And do all rocks come from Earth? And then unit review. And now we're talking about electricity and energy. How do toasters work? What lights a digital clock? How do hearing aids help people? So this is your typical spiral approach to science. Each unit um, covers a different topic within science. It's not all going to be on biology. It's not going to all be on um, ecology. Not going to all be on geology. It's not going to all be on um, you know physics, but. Um, it just depends on your your um, preference on approach. I kind of like this approach. It kind of keeps the boredom factor down. You know, I mean, you get into biology and they're really into it for a while and then they want to move on to something else. You know, um, sometimes that happens to me daily. Like daily, you know, one day they're really interested in rocks and the next day they could care less about rocks. So um, I personally kind of like that approach. Some people prefer to go deeper. So in that case, if you're wanting something, again, simple, um, I would not be afraid to explore multiple grade levels at one time. Honestly, there's not going to be a huge difference between third grade, fourth grade, and fifth grade in terms of the approach or the content, but the topics will be different because they're going to rotate those. So 
you know, don't be afraid to pull from different grade levels and, and you know, pull those units out and store them by topic and then you can have multiple resources at your disposal if you want to go deeper or you want to stay on topic. You know, you finish a unit but they're still really into, say, light and sound and you want to keep going with it. You know, then you've got some other resources um, to pull from, but the um, the approach to this is very typical of what they would get in school. It's going to just rotate the topics through and go deeper and deeper every year kind of thing. Um, anyway, here's your review. And then we got a hands-on activity, flathead metal screw, disc magnet, and um, six inches of copper wire and a one and a half volt C battery. So those may not be just things that you have laying around your house, but they should be really easy to get. Okay, big idea six. This is a physics one. Why do some buildings entrances have ramps? Or maybe it is, it might be an engineering unit. What's the difference between a nail and a screw? I think this is more engineering and STEM. How do elevators work? How does a wheelbarrow make work easier? That's physics. A unit review and a hands-on activity. All right, your answer key. Again, perforated pages. You could pull those out or work from the PDF. And anyway, that's an overview of the daily science for grade four from Evan Moore. And I have a playlist if you want to see more Evan Moore product reviews. Um, they do send these to me for in exchange for my honest review. But I also have materials that I purchased myself and I review those and I include all of those in the playlist. Um, so if you have any questions, let me know down below. Otherwise, thank you so much for joining me today and I hope you have a great rest of your day.